Hey friend, Graham here from recordingrevolution.com. Hope you are well. Today, let's talk about where you should be spending your money when it comes to your music. Especially right now, when we're all trying to be really smart with our finances, where should you invest when it comes to your music? Because let's be honest, there's a lot of crap we could buy. I would say the first and most important thing you should invest in, especially if you're just starting out and you've saved up a little bit of money for your music, is just a basic home recording rig. And you don't have to spend a lot of money on this. In fact, there's a point of diminishing returns where the more you spend, the better the quality. It doesn't necessarily go up much, if at all. You can even get an incredible sounding recording with just a USB microphone or heck, just the microphone in your iPhone. I have a video which I'm gonna to link to below in the description on how you can set up a home recording rig for under $150. And if you have a little bit larger budget than that, I also have more gear recommendations in my free home studio gear guide, which I'll link to in the description below as well if you wanna check that out. But I don't want you to spend endlessly on gear. That's not the point of the guide. The point of the guide is to figure out how much you can afford to spend and some really good recommendations on gear that I trust that I know sounds good. Once you have your basic home recording rig like I outlined, then you don't need to buy more gear. Like that's all the gear you should need for a long time. Buying more gear once you have a basic home recording rig will not help you. It is a bottomless pit. So once you have your basic home recording rig set up, the next best place you could possibly invest your money for your music is in education. Having gear is one thing, knowing how to use it is another, knowing how to make it sound its best is an entirely different thing. And that's where education comes into play. And obviously, I'm really biased in this. I believe in education. I'm teaching every single week here on YouTube, but I really think you should invest in some online courses on how to record and mix your music. Get some of my courses, get courses from somebody else, get two or three courses and then watch them and apply them and practice what you're learning from the courses with the basic setup you have. Another recommendation I have in terms of education is my free radio ready guide. I teach you the six steps you need to create a radio ready song, a song that sounds so good it could be on the radio. I'll link to that guide in the description below. But to summarize, the steps are, and here's the thing, most people miss a few of these steps. Songwriting, okay, most people assume that it's a good song, but probably not a good song. So you could work on your songwriting. Arranging, this is so important. So many musicians skip this stage as if I wrote the song, now it's time to record it. Working through the arrangement and the elements and the production of it is so, so critical. Recording, obviously. Professionally editing your tracks. This is one of the big difference makers between pro songs and demo amateur sounding songs is the ones that have been edited professionally. Mixing, of course, and mastering so it's ready to go on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever. But I've got a bunch of details on how those processes work, what's involved in all six of those steps, and some tips and tricks on how to get the best out of your home recording rig in my Six Steps to a Radio Ready Song Guide, which is also below. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is plugins, right? Plugins, plugins, plugins. We're obsessed with plugins. Honestly, I've been saying this for 10 years now, and it's only become more true. The plugins that come with your DAW, whether it's Pro Tools or Logic or whatever you use, are plenty good to make a professional record. You do not need to buy more plugins to make a record. Now, that being said, if you want to, sure. If I was to look at your budget allocated to invest in your music, I would say 80% of it should be going to your basic home recording rig and education. That's the bulk of it. And then 20% you can spend on fun stuff that you don't really need, but you'd like to play with, and that could include some fun plugins. Okay, now you have your basic home recording rig, let's assume you've invested in some education and you've spent all your saved up money on getting ready to go for your home recording journey. Now what do you do when the months come along and you've saved up a little bit of money, or let's say you have you know, $100 a month you can commit to your music. What would you do with that $100, let's say now in April or next month or the next month? How should you spend your music budget month to month after you're all set up from the beginning? Well, the first thing you should be spending that money on, in my opinion, is to prioritize anything that it takes to get new music released, okay? The, the entire purpose of having a home studio is to make music. 
and the entire purpose of making music is to share it with other humans. Now, it doesn't have to be the whole world, it could just be your best friend, but you want to not only take your idea from your brain and create it and you be proud of it sonically, but it's art and art is meant to be shared, so you need to release your music. So anything that's standing in your, your way from releasing a piece of music, that's where your money should be prioritized. So that could mean investing in uh, hiring a session guitar player because you just can't really get that guitar sound on your own or you really need a drummer but you know, you're trying to fiddle with a drum plug and it doesn't sound as good. Well, if you have a little bit of money, you could hire a remote drummer for cheap on the internet. If that can help your music get better to be released, then do it. If you need to spend money on some cover art, do it, whatever it takes to finish a project, even if it's one song, and get it out there in the world. The last thing you wanna do is say, well, I would have released my new single, but I spent all my money on plugins, and I don't have any money left to finish this thing and get it out there. That's stupid. Music released is better than music that you're perfecting that will never be released. The other side of this is that not only do you wanna get your music out to share with people, but as an engineer, as a producer, Completing a song, releasing a song is actually how we progress and get better at our craft. Not perfecting one song, but finishing a thousand songs. That's how we get really, really good. So first, spend whatever money you can in your budget every month to prioritize finishing and releasing a single or your latest release. Number two, if you have any money left over, invest that in promoting that single or release, which is pretty self-explanatory, right? We wanna get our music in front of as many people as possible, so use those resources for promotion if you can. Third, if you have any money left over after promoting your release, invest in more education. Educate yourself. Now you'll notice that I put investing in education after releasing music and promoting it. Why? Because creating and making music is the best education. I am blown away by how many home studio owners have researched and invested in time and effort to, to find the right gear for their studio, buy it, set it up, and own it, and never make any music in it. Not only that, well, they will buy all the gear that they need, and then maybe even buy all my courses and training and learn a lot, but they still haven't made any music, and there's a big disconnect there. Buy what you need, yes. Invest in basic education so you know what you're doing with that gear, yes. But then the best education that there is after that is making a ton of music. This is a art form. This is not a science. Music production is not a science, it's an art form. And the only way to get good at art is to do lots of it, okay? You, you can read about science or you could do art. Reading about art is not the same. So I want you to learn what you need to learn but make as much music as possible. That's the best way to learn quickly, my friend. So you make music, but then even after that, if you still have some money left over, always be a student. I'm always a student. I invest in education all the time. There's a part of my budget that goes to online training and courses and classes and workshops and live events and all those kinds of things that help me develop as a person, as an artist, as a musician, as a business owner, all these things, right? So. If you have any money left over, invest in education some more. And finally, if after those three things, releasing your music, promoting your music, investing in education, if you still have a little bit of money left in your budget, go ahead and buy that piece of gear that you don't need, but you just want. It could be that microphone that just looks cool, that you've always wanted, you know you don't need it, and you got that voice of Graham in your ear saying, don't buy it, you don't need it. You can ignore that voice at that point because you've prioritized your spending properly and then go out and buy the thing you want just because you want it. At the end of the day, this is fun. And have a piece of gear because you want it, because you think it looks cool, because you think it sounds cool, because you just want choices, that's fine. I've never been against that. What I'm against is buying gear you don't need, thinking that that's what's gonna get you the sound that you need. No, simple gear with the proper education and experience is how you get a professional sound. Buying fun stuff just because you want it, there's nothing wrong with that as long as you can afford it. Now finally, like I mentioned a moment ago, if you have the basic gear, and if you don't, you can click the links below in the description and get some recommendations on how to set up your home studio and what you need at a bare minimum. But if you got that gear and you're not quite happy with the sound of your final releases, then you probably should go through my six steps to a radio ready song guide. There's probably one or two of the steps that you're either missing, skipping, or doing improperly. This will walk you through a framework 
to make sure you don't miss anything in the song production process. Every major song you've ever heard and liked has gone through this six step process. So all I did was just reverse engineer what's right there and map it out for you in a simple to read, easy to implement guide. It's absolutely free. So I want you to have it. It's a little bit of education I wanna to give to you. And then I want you to apply it and actually make your next release by following it to the letter. It's absolutely free. Just go to RadioReadyGuide.com, RadioReadyGuide.com, or the link is below in the description as well. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for liking this video. Subscribing to the channel means a ton. Stay safe, stay healthy. I'll see you on another video real soon.